Hi, sign creators. It's Miss Lee. I hope you guys are doing okay at home. I miss you all so much. Um, thanks for joining me today. We're going to read a book um, and then you guys will answer your questions. So try to follow along at home and I hope you can see the pictures fall off. Um, so today we're going to read Flat Stanley, his original adventure. Breakfast was ready. I'll go wake the boys, Miss Lambchop said to her husband, George Lambchop. Just then, their younger son, Arthur, calls from the bedroom. He shared with his brother, Stanley. Hey, come and look. Hey. Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop were both very much in favor of politeness and careful speech. Hey is for horses, Arthur, not people, Mr. Lambchop said as they entered the bedroom. Try to remember that. Trust me. Excuse me, Arthur said. But look. He pointed to Stanley's bed. Across it lay the enormous bulletin board that Mr. Lambchop had given the boys a Christmas ago so they could pin up pictures and messages and maps. It had fallen during the night on top of Stanley. But Stanley was not hurt. In fact, he would have been sleeping if it had not been woken up by his brother. shop. What's going on here? He called out cheerfully from beneath the enormous board. Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop hurried to lift it from the bed. Heavens, said Mrs. Lambchop. Gosh, said Arthur. Stanley's flat. As a pancake, said Miss Lamb Mr. Lambchop. Darnest thing I've ever seen. Let's all have breakfast, Mrs. Lambchop said. Then Stanley and I will go see Dr. Dan and see what he has to say. I wonder what Dr. Dan's going to say. Do we think Stanley's going to be all right? Let's read on. In his office, Dr. Dan examined Stanley all over. How do you feel? He asked. Does it hurt very much? I felt sort of tickly for a while after, but I feel fine now. Well, that's mostly how it is with these cases, said Dr. Dan. We'll just have to keep an eye on This young fellow, he said, when he had finished the examination. Sometimes we doctors, despite all of our years of training and experience, can only marvel at how little we really know. Mrs. Lambchop said she thought Stanley's clothes would have to be altered by the tailor now. So Dr. Dan told his nurse to take Stanley's measurements. I wonder... What does the word altered mean? I think that if Dr. Dan is having the nurse take Stanley's measurements, I think altered means when clothing is going to be changed and it fits you better. So that's what the word altered means. It means to change your size and your clothing. Mrs. Lambshop wrote them down. Stanley was four feet tall, about a foot wide, and half an inch thick. Look at the picture. It's only half an inch thick. He's so tiny. So, so flat. Being flat. When Stanley got used to being flat, he enjoyed it. He could go in and out of rooms, and even when the door was closed, just by lying down and sliding through the crack at the bottom. Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop said it was silly, but they were quite proud of him. Arthur got jealous and tried to slide. There's Arthur, he's very jealous of Stanley. Under the door. But he just banged his head. Being flat could also be helpful, Stanley found. He was taking a walk with Mrs. Lambshop one afternoon when her favorite ring fell from her finger. The ring rolled across the sidewalk and down between the bars of a grating that covered a deep, dark shaft. Mrs. Lambchop began to cry. I have an idea, Stanley said. He took the laces out of his shoes and an extra pair out of his pocket and tied them all together to make one long lace. Then he tied one end of that and back in his belt and gave the other end to his mother. Lower he, me, he said, and I will look for the ring. There's Stanley going down the grate, trying to go find the ring. Oh, look at him go. Thank you, Stanley, said Mrs. Lambchop. 
She lowered him between the bars and moved him carefully up and down and from side to side so that he could search the whole floor of the shaft. Two policemen came by and stared at Mrs. Lambchop as she was holding the long lace that ran down through the grating. She pretended not to notice them. What's the matter, lady? The first policeman asked. Is your yo-yo stuck? I'm not playing with a yo-yo, Miss Lambchop said sharply. My son is at the other end of the lace, if you must know. Get the net, Harry, said the second policeman. We have a cuckoo. Just then, down on the shaft, Stanley cried out, Hooray! Mrs. Lambchop pulled him up and saw that he had the ring. Good for you, Stanley, she said, but she turned angrily to the policeman. A cuckoo indeed, she said. Shame. The policeman apologized. We get it, lady, they said. We have been hasty. We see that now. The policeman apologized. People should think twice before making rude remarks, said Mrs. Lampchop, and then not make them at all. There's Stanley with the ring. He found it. The policeman realized that there was a good rule and said that they would try to remember it. One day, Stanley got a letter from his friend, Thomas Anthony Jeffrey, whose family had recently moved to California. A school vacation was about to begin, and Stanley was invited to spend it with the Jeffreys. Oh boy, Stanley said. I would love to go. Mr. Lamtrop sighed. A round-trip train or airplane ticket to California is very expensive, he said. I will have to think of some cheaper way. When Mr. Lamtrop came home, from the office that evening, he brought an enormous brown paper envelope. What do you think he's going to do with the paper envelope? It's really big. Let's read on and find out. Now then, Stanley, he said, try this for size. The envelope fit Stanley very well. There was even room left over. Mrs. Lambchop discovered for an egg salad sandwich made with thin bread and a toothbrush case filled with milk. Oh gosh, that's so silly. They had to put a great many stamps on the envelope to pay for both airmail and insurance, but it was still much less expensive than a train or airplane ticket to California. The next day, Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop slid Stanley into the envelope, along with the egg salad sandwich and the toothbrush case full of milk, and, made, and mailed him from the box on the counter. On the corner. The envelope had to be folded to fit through the slot, but Stanley was a limber boy, and inside the box he straightened right up again. Mrs. Lambchop was nervous because Stanley had never been away from home had never been away from home alone before. She rapped on the box. Can you hear me, dear? she called. Are you all right? Stanley's voice came quite clearly. I'm fine. Can I eat my sandwich now? Wait an hour and try not to get overheated, dear, Mrs. Lambchop said. Then she and Mr. Lambchop cried out, goodbye, goodbye, and went home. Stanley had a fine time in California. When the visit was over, the Jeffreys returned him in a beautiful white envelope that, had, that they made themselves. It had red and blue markings to show that it was airmail and Thomas Jeffrey had lettered it valuable and fragile, and this end up on both sides. That was really nice of him to write valuable and fragile because Stanley was in there, and you don't want him to get hurt. Back home, Stanley told his family that he had been handled so carefully he never felt a single bump. Mrs. Lambchop said it proved that jet planes were wonderful, and so was the Postal Service, and that was a great age in, what, in which to live. Stanley thought so too. So we're going to go ahead and stop there. And on Class Dojo, there's going to be a question. And I want you to think, if Stanley came and visited you at your home, what three things would he do with you? I know it's a crazy time right now and we're all at home. So try to think, what would he do? Would he watch a movie with you? Would he play a game? Would he help you with your homework? 
So there, those are just some ideas, but I want you to be really creative and think about what would he do while he was at home with you.